All right, today we are doing chapter two, section two in algebra one. And our essential question is how can you use addition or subtraction to solve an inequality? All right, I'm going to probably go through some of these examples pretty quickly, but you're always welcome to hit pause. This is pretty much exactly the same thing as solving an equation, but instead of having an equal sign, we've got a greater than or a less than. So this is the same property, but instead of addition property of equality, it's the addition property of inequality. Again, you're always welcome to hit pause here. So on this one, we want to solve. So we write the initial inequality down. I asked myself, what can I do to get rid of that minus 6? Add 6. x is greater than or equal to negative 4. If I were going to graph it, it would be shaded to the right with a closed dot. All right, take a second. Solve and graph these on your own. I'll give you a hint on number 1. I would probably start by adding 2, and it's probably going to be an open dot. Hit pause. When you're done, hit pause to check your answers. So on number one, open dot at negative seven, shaded to the right. Number two, close dot at eight, shaded to the left. Number three, you're going to add one-fourth to both sides. And remember, two-fourths, when you reduce it, is one-half. So an open dot at one-half, shade it to the left. Subtraction, property of inequality, same thing. Pretty much, whatever you do to one side of the inequality sign, you do to the other side. So I have y plus 8. I'm going to ask myself, how can I get rid of that plus 8? Well, subtract 8. I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. Get y is less than or equal to negative 3. So I need to shade all numbers that are smaller than negative 3. On the next one, I've got negative 8 is less than 1.4. Well, the 1.4 is positive and it's being added to the m. So I need to ask myself, what can I do to get rid of that positive 1.4? Subtract it. I get negative 9.4. So here they rewrote it so that the m comes first. And the way I always look at this is, hey, that inequality is pointing to the nine, negative 9.4. Right here, it's still pointing to the negative 9.4. So I need to have an open dot, and I'm going to shade everything larger than negative 9.4. And if you notice on the scale down here, you don't necessarily always have to count by ones. On this one, they counted by 0.1. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. Take a second, try these three on your own, hit the pause button when you think you have the answers. Hit the pause button to check yourself. Number four, close dot at negative eight, shaded to the left. Close dot at two thirds, shaded to the right. Open dot at negative three, shaded to the right. All right, here we have a word problem. A circuit overloads at 1,800 watts of electricity. You plug a microwave oven that uses 1,100 watts. We want to write and solve an inequality that represents how many watts you can add to the circuit without overloading the circuit. Then we have a part two. In addition to the microwave, which of the following circuits can you plug in? Or which of the appliances can you plug into that circuit? So, kind of read that problem, figure out what's important. The main thing is you've got 1,100 being used, and you can use a maximum of 1,800. So our plan is we're going to have to write a inequality, and then we will solve that inequality. So the microwave used, or the watts used by the microwave, plus additional watts, has to be less than the overload wattage. 
So 1100 plus W has to be less than 1800. Subtract 1100. W has to be less than 700, so we can't use more than 700 watts. So, we look back up here, well, what could we use? We can't use the toaster, we can't use the hot plate, we could use the radio and the blender. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Try that one on your own, see how you do. Nope, because the additional electricity must be less than 800 watts and the toaster uses 800 watts. Hope you enjoyed.